Hello, in this video I'm going to explain what's wrong with the way you're currently revising and suggest the best techniques for making revisions stick in your brain. These ideas are based on the excellent book Make It Stick by Peter C. Brown, which I heartily recommend to teachers and students alike. The first thing to say is that if the way you're revising at the moment is by reading and highlighting and studying the same topic over and over and over again until you feel like you really know it, the chances are those memories won't stick in your brain in the long term. While it feels good to revise like this, it is only really useful for storing knowledge in your short term memory. The first technique for making it stick is to do regular short tests, not just in the immediate run up to the exams, but throughout the year as you're learning new material, you should always be going back and testing yourself on material that's been done throughout the course. Even as you're reading a book, you should be testing yourself on what you've just learned, or even thinking of questions for what you're about to read. Short tests are excellent because they provide you with practice of retrieving knowledge, which is ultimately what you're going to have to do in the exam and what you're going to have to do throughout your life. One good technique for developing a pack of revision questions is to use the Cornell Notes system, more of which in a separate video. The next tip is that your revision should be spaced. It feels really productive to revise one topic over and over again until you feel like you really know what you're talking about with it. However, in practice, that's just embedding the knowledge in your short term memory. It is not storing it for the long term. Therefore, if, let's say, on Tuesday the 5th, you're revising projectile motion, don't revise projectile motion on Wednesday the 6th. Revise it again on the 7th. The key here is that forgetting is your friend. You want to do a little bit of forgetting between the first time you study the topic and when you return to the topic a couple of days later. That little bit of forgetting will make the revision harder, but it will mean that the memories are more effectively stored in your long-term memory. Try increasing the spaces between learning the same topic. So perhaps the next time you would look at this topic, maybe the following Monday, and again the Monday after that. Gradually increasing the spacing as the amount you forget each time decreases. The next method, interleaving, goes hand in hand with spacing. Interleaving basically means mixing up your revision. So on that Wednesday between studying projectile motion, you should study something completely different. Maybe study electrical circuits on that day. And as before, space out your learning of that topic in order to provide the best possible retention in your long-term memory. Next up, your revision should be difficult. While it may boost your confidence to revise material that you feel like you know really well or do easy questions, it will not do much for storing this knowledge in your long-term memory. You must do difficult work. No pain, no gain. The more challenging the work you do, the more likely you are to retain the knowledge of it in your long-term memory. This is the former US Secretary of Defense, Donald Rumsfeld. He made a very famous speech in which he said that there are known knowns, known unknowns, and unknown unknowns. This might sound confusing, but what he means here is that there are things that we know that we know. The topics that you hope will come up in an exam and that you can always get right every time they do. There are also things that we know we don't know, the things that we know we need to work on and focus on in order that if they do come up in the exam, we'll be able to get, score those marks. And then there are the unknown unknowns. These are the things that we don't know we don't know. A reflective student is somebody who looks back on some work they've completed, for example, a practice exam paper, and rather than just looking at the grade, looks at the questions that they've got wrong, where they've dropped marks. These are your unknowns. You need to know what these unknowns are. You need known unknowns. When you've looked through the exam paper and found your known unknowns, this is where you need to target your revision so that they become known knowns and you go into the exam giving yourself the best possible chance of a high grade. And finally, you need to approach your studies with what is known as a growth mindset, as opposed to a fixed mindset. A student with a fixed mindset will blame their failures on a lack of intelligence and attribute their successes to a high level of intelligence. Those with a growth mindset recognise that actually intelligence is not fixed. Our intelligence changes based on the work and the experiences that we have during our lives. Our brain actually reconfigures itself. This is something called neuroplasticity. A student with a growth mindset will look at a low grade and acknowledge that they need to work harder to increase that grade. Equally, they will look at a high grade and they will acknowledge that that is because of the work that they've put in. A person with a growth mindset will never look at a problem and go, I can't do that. They will go, I can't do that yet. This might sound a little bit wishy-washy, but having the right frame of mind and taking the right approach to your studies can make a huge difference. To quote the former Manchester United manager, Sir Alex Ferguson, hard work will always overcome natural talent when natural talent does not work hard enough. 
And if a growth mindset is good enough for somebody who won the Premier League 13 times and the Champions League twice, it should be good enough for you too.